Hi everyone, we're here to talk about the topic of um, how we can build trust through technology and training, particularly in the iGaming industry. I'm Myra Pearson, I'm a leadership coach and a trainer myself, been doing this for some time now, but um, more specifically with the gaming industry for the past, let's say, five years, okay? Um, we're, today, my role is that of a moderator with um, the panel, and um, we have with us Adam Boyle from uh, True Narrative and Sean Palmer from uh, Amber Gaming. And uh, perhaps, uh, Adam, would you care to tell us more about your role and more about True Narrative, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, hi, all. Uh, I'm Adam Boyle. I head up the gaming team at True Narrative. Uh, I've been working within the identity management space and fraud for over 10 years now. And the majority, majority of those years have been focused within the, the gambling vertical. Uh, at True Narrative, we're a global uh, risk, fraud and identity uh, monitoring decision platform. Uh, using our technology, businesses are able to use their data, uh, access multiple third party suppliers via a single API and run multiple strategies such as risk, fraud, IDV, transactional behaviour monitoring, and also affordable checks via uh, one unified platform. Great. Sean? Hi, both. It's great to see you both uh, keeping safe and well. Uh, I'm Sean, Business Development Manager for Amber Gaming, based here in sunny Malta. Primarily, I'm responsible for introducing our Compliance Academy, which is an online solution for the gaming community to train and manage compliance. Amber Gaming are part of the SMP group of companies and we've been supporting key players in the gaming sector for over 13 years with corporate services and regulatory and compliance support. Perfect. So to get more into the topic, trust, training and um, technology, here we're looking at uh, what um, all about compliance, but more um, so about successful gaming. We'll tap into the journey um, between the operators and the customers and how we can make this a uh, seamless one, right? And we'll also tap into successful gaming in the future and what that looks like. Maybe we can start with um, technology. And Adam, since you mentioned automation, can you take us through how automation can make for that um, frictionless journey between the um, customer and the operator? Yeah, it's a great question, Myra, especially off the back of what we've seen with the COVID pandemic. Uh, we're really seeing more businesses look at automation with staff working from home or because of staff cutbacks as well. And um, the key factors uh, of automation that allows you to do things like reducing customer friction by improving customer loyalty and inclusion in the revenue. Uh, the less of the player has friction, asking for documents and further information, uh, the more likely they'll stay in the operator, which obviously helps to increase in revenues. Uh, reducing players slipping through the gaps and eliminating fines. So by hardwiring your company risk-based level uh, and the regulation requirements, this will ensure when a threshold is hit, uh, an event uh, will automatically happen and remove any possible fines for not interacting with the player as and when required. And um, helping with also documenting regulation, the interaction with the customers and having an audit trail. And um, with automation, you can have a single customer view uh, and document every interaction you have with the player. And it also makes it a lot easier for your annual audits, pulling together all the relevant information for the regulator. Uh, and I suppose finally, reducing the uh, the work for the operator's back office team uh, and eliminating manual process. So the more things that can be done uh, automated, the more the CS team can focus on elements that they do require manual interaction. Um, automated as much of the customer journey as possible and providing a one-stop shop makes it easier and smoother journey for both the players uh, with minimal friction and for the operators being able to focus on their core roles and key customer interactions. Um, Sean, from the training that you carry out, how do you see automation supporting operators and the likes of the customer service team? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know that automation and digital platforms are a real enabler for the industry. Um, here at Amber, we've created a, a cloud-based LMS for streamlining compliance and regulatory training. I think um, on top of that, the compliance is one area of gambling uh, globally where there's a skill shortage. And in a time when the regulations are getting tougher, uh, digital learning is a perfect solution. It's an efficient and affordable way to achieve a culture of compliance at all levels. Um, one example of how we were able to add value to our customers during COVID 
um, was just in terms of supporting our customers, creating micro learnings, where we were, they were able to um, quickly uh, communicate regulatory changes to their wider teams across multiple jurisdictions. And, um, and Sean, you mentioned uh, regulatory changes, um, and this is a hot topic right now. So I was wondering if maybe you can um, highlight some of these um, changes and uh, just uh, tell us where they can find these, perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's certainly a hot topic right now, and a lot of people, I think, see it as a hot potato. And nobody wants to get burned for, by it, that's for sure. Another thing that we know is that compliance and regulations are only going to get tougher and it's really important that companies embrace this now and really move forward with a positive mindset towards it. It's an enabler for success and a brighter future for the gaming community and can help us, I think, to shake off the stigma and move forward with a more entertainment style gaming business. Um, for example, the average lifespan of a customer service agent is about 18 months. And in that time, there's so much for them to learn and a massive responsibility on their shoulders. So through digital learning platforms like the Amber Gaming Compliance Academy, they can learn at their own pace and they can learn from anywhere and really understand the need for diligence in their role. So I think it's uh, really important that we reinforce the three fundamentals of compliance uh, through our platform. And that is one, to uphold the integrity of the jurisdiction, two, to protect the vulnerable, and three, to make sure we are not funding crime or terrorist activity. And if we can use technology to help us instill this, then absolutely we should fully embrace it. Yeah, uh, we've also seen a lot of requests of support uh, operations, uh, operators specifically around the COVID changes, like uh, some of the UKGC changes, uh, interacting with the customer who had been playing for an hour in a single play session, uh, reviewing thresholds and triggers uh, for new customers, uh, conducting affordability assess uh, assessments, and uh, implementing processes that ensure that continual monitoring of players, such as identifying patterns of play, um, spend or behaviours that have changed in recent weeks. Uh, where people have uh, previously been doing this manually, this is where we've seen the biggest gaps. Uh, and some operators have taken well over a month to implement some of these requirement changes. Um, I think a lot of businesses in the current climate, it's shown how technology can help support uh, an operator and allow them to pivot quicker, uh, deploy changes instantly, and rather than waiting for internal uh, or external technical support, they can take time to, uh, to due to technical resources backlog, I think having the ability to make changes quick in natural language rather than technical code, it's going to be key over the coming months uh, and years as we know regulation will mm. do up. Um, I suppose, Sean, from your side, how are you consulting operators around sort of uh, these sort of changes, with especially with COVID? Uh, yeah, absolutely. These are, these are really uncertain times, there's no doubt about that. And I think uh, no matter which industry people are in, Companies have never had and needed uh, digital solutions more than they do right now. Um, so throughout the pandemic, I think one observation that I've really noticed um, is that compliance has to be fluid. It has to be able to flow and change to protect the players. Um, excuse me, <clears throat> as circumstances change around the world. And at Amber, we have solutions that enable us to keep up with these changes and make the information available quickly um, and remotely in any time zone to our customers. All right, lots of information there. Thank you. Um, and to delve just that little bit deeper, we do still hear of um, companies struggling with this. I'm talking about even, for example, let's say in the UK, right? You've got the um, Gambling Commission that um, had some investigations and what happened was that some companies were actually penalised. Um, they had cases where people were... Um, gambling for hours and no checks were, were made. There were other cases where people gambled and um, used thousands and thousands of pounds and again, no checks were made. And you talked about um, changes in regulations. Same thing um, in Malta, there was a webinar between the MGA and the FIAU in, um, in June and they mentioned um, uh, something in relation to thresholds and how people weren't being verified necessarily. 
So, you know, it, it is a, a challenging thing. And I wonder um, how can technology and training really help um, get to the core of these, uh, these challenges and maybe even delve deeper into what they are? Yeah, I'll take that one. So th there are some businesses that have been doing fine uh, for doing nothing on player due diligence. But I'd say a lot of the fines that we've seen out there is players slipping through the gaps. Uh, this is typically uh, due to an operator carrying out the processes manually uh, and unable to keep up the, the volume of transactions or even human error. And by using technology to configure and monitor uh, when a threshold uh, has met a risk-based level, uh, an affordability check is required or they need to carry out due diligence checks. And um, when the regulator expects uh, technology ensures an operator doesn't have any gaps or al and allows them to react quickly uh, to any future changes in regulation. And um, this not only gives you peace of mind with meeting regulation, but it ensures you're treating all players uh, fairly and equally. Um, the risk level of the player, I suppose, is important to point out is it, it's not static. Uh, it changes constantly with further deposits and as a player uh, plays and bets, uh, trying to monitor this manually can leave an operator open to risk and a player open to spending um, more than what they can afford. Uh, by using technology, uh, this allows you to monitor your players on an ongoing basis uh, and react instantly when the player hits risk level, uh, showing that they do need that element of human interaction. Um, the technology and data is out there. It's about using and deploying it correctly throughout the customer journey, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I can, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've seen the True Narrative platform, which Adam showed me uh, previously, and yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, it's got some brilliant applications for being able to identify um, problem gamblers, etc. cetera. Um, and furthermore, I think we need to understand that our customers are businesses, it's a competitive industry, and profits and growth are key. Uh, but much more so these days, I think we're seeing more and more businesses that want to balance perfect purpose with profits. Uh, you take the B Corporation, uh, for instance, a real growth in companies that want to be eco-friendly and social, socially responsible and using business as a force for good. Um, so from speaking with our client, uh, a lot of our clients, uh, we can see that it's not just a box ticking in exercise anymore to please the regulators. I think there's a real sense of corporate social responsibility and digital platforms give companies the analytics and reporting tools to identify identify um, employees that are really excelling in this area, spot any potential risk to the business and players and keep real-time records for auditors. So using the uh, online digital tools, you can act swiftly to ensure that you're on the right track to instilling a positive culture of compliance. And I suppose um, on a, like, if we flip it, would you say there are any uh, limitations to technology? There's, there's always gonna be a need uh, for the, an element of human interaction. Uh, and technology will never fully fill that gap. Uh, I think, yes, there are some great AI tools out there uh, that can really help with the customer journey and customer interaction, helping reduce workload. But I think when it comes to things like social responsibility, uh, we, we have to step in and do this in person. Uh, I, I'm a keen gambler myself, uh, and people don't actually mind a, a conversation at the right time. I've had a bad day. Uh, my football team, Blackburn, might have ruined my accumulator once again, uh, and it could be mean I'm tempted to bet more than, than I can afford or I should. So I think having human interaction uh, here is good. Uh, businesses, the likes of Sean and, and the gaming and operators, uh, they actually train their team to be able to identify this. It's all about getting the right level of automation to help with a frictionless journey uh, and cost savings to a business. But, but I personally feel the elements of human interaction uh, should never be fully replaced with technology. Yeah, I think technology is really exciting right now. and There's some amazing innovations happening with AI and VR. Um, and it's all going to go bonkers with the 5G network. So, but can artificial ever really replace human emotional intelligence? Uh, I guess that's a, a question for a, another topic sometime. Mm. Um, but for now, I really think, yeah, it's the human interaction by the customer service teams and their emotional intelligence that plays a key part in protecting players. And the technology gives them more time and the knowledge to do this diligently. Mm. So um, that's where the, the trust part comes in as well. So we're looking at the technology, the training, but then the people coming in 
um, when needed through this, uh, when things are automated and when they do get their training. Um, I suppose if we could tap into the um, gaming of the future and, um, you know, what that looks like, what does successful gaming look like, do you think? Yeah, I think one of the things that we can definitely say is regulation isn't going to go away. Uh, no doubt it's going to increase. So gambling operators of tomorrow need to put compliance uh, at the forefront of the business rather than it sort of being an afterthought, maybe where we've seen it previously. Uh, I think it's key to understand regulation, what's required, uh, training the staff correctly to understand why certain processes are happening, you know, educating uh, players. Uh, using technology correctly to pull this together would mean staff always understand what's expected of them and why they're asking certain questions. Uh, this all also educates the players on why our process is doing it. It's for the benefit and to make them understand why certain interactions are taking place. Uh, regulation is always um, met and the ability to use it in different jurisdictions, um, giving you the ability, ability to pivot to new markets uh, or even ability to pivot if we see uh, you know, a second wave of the sort of COVID pandemic. Uh, and also it helps offer <clears throat> a seamless customer journey, which will help the business grow for the operators moving forward. All right. Um, any thoughts there, Sean? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't see into the future, of course, but I think uh, three things that are fairly safe to say would be that the uh, requirements of compliance are going to continue to evolve unpredictably. I think digital learning is certainly going to continue to cement its place. Um, in the heart of learning and development, and gaming and technology uh, will continue to advance at incredible pace. Um, and for me, it's certainly the companies that are embracing these three things, and particularly embracing compliance now, and that are this going to be successful companies of tomorrow. I think the use of technology can really help us shape the future in so many positive ways. And, help us to shape off the stigma in gaming and create a gaming entertainment business that we can all be proud of. Okay, great, thanks. I don't know if you have um, anything else you'd like to add to this. Um, I know uh, uh, when we were talking as well, we were talking about like sometimes maybe smaller companies um, might uh, um, struggle, for example, with budgets, or is it um, is it something that um, you know? How we, can we convince them it's a positive investment, for example? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can give you one good example there. I spoke to a uh, potential customer um, last week, actually, um, who had been the company had been fined several millions of pounds by the uh, UK GC. And um, he said, retrospectively, uh, although we thought we were making a saving on the training, it certainly would have saved us a few million pounds in hindsight. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, yeah, definitely, the Compliance Academy is actually really well-priced and great value. Um, and yeah, the, the risk factor and the potential fines are enormous, so it is, uh, yeah, and I think that's that's the same uh, on the side of ours. You know, it's uh, you can't really put a price on compliance because at the end of the day in the gaming space, if you don't do it properly, you'll receive a huge fine. Uh, you'll no longer have a license, so you'll no longer be able to do business with the customers. Um, there are many models out there that can you know scale with volume. So it's just really looking at that uh, by using a proper compliance solution. It not only protects your, um, your business, it also protects your players as well. Great. Thank you. Right. I think we've got lots of um, useful information and added value there in terms of what people can do um, in terms of training, but also what technology is out there. And it was nice to look at um, some solutions and um, not just talk about current challenges um, that are there because sometimes when we use when we hear the word compliance um, people tend to um, have their, their alarm bells on so so thanks a lot for that um, and I think we'd like to just um, conclude here and say thank you to everyone there and feel free to um, to contact us um, maybe Adam Dor you can um, I don't know if you'd like to plug in um, some information on true narrative or yeah, I, I suppose uh, any questions, uh, we're, we're on LinkedIn. Uh, you can drop me a message directly, uh, adoyletronarrative.com. Um, and, and any questions around sort of uh, onboarding, KYC, affordability, please don't hesitate to get in touch. 
Sean? Yeah, likewise, we're on LinkedIn. Um, so please do find us on, on LinkedIn, ambergaming.com, uh, and we'll be happy to help with any inquiries. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, all. Thanks, both. Take care. Good to see you.